Welcome to AgriPulse Newsmakers. I'm your host, Lydia Johnson. This week, we'll take you to the heart of ag policy from the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. Phil Brasher and I have spent the week diving into issues around agriculture production, trade, immigration, and energy that could bring major policy changes after the November election. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance was announced Monday as Donald Trump's running mate. He received endorsements from the Ohio Farm Bureau, along with an array of farmers and ag district officials. During his acceptance speech, Vance criticized President Biden's past support for NAFTA and normalized trade relations with China. Delegates also heard from Arizona ranchers Jim and Sue Chilton, who said illegal immigration has increased fivefold on their land since Biden took office. In April alone, they said more than 5,000 people entered the U.S. on their land. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, who unsuccessfully challenged Trump for the presidential nomination, addressed delegates Wednesday night, touting the opportunity for U.S. energy independence with the Trump Vance administration. The crowd waved signs reading American oil from American soil during his speech. Kellyanne Conway managed Donald Trump's 2016 campaign and later became a counselor to former President Trump. She says the rural vote played a large role in 2016 and could again this year. Well, you're absolutely right, Lydia. People look at themselves as urban, suburban, or rural. I think that demographers and uh, geographic experts do the same by slicing and dicing up America uh, thusly. But when you look at rural America, it really is very much in the Republican column now. That was not always the case. And over time, the rural voter has been migrating more to the America First agenda of secure borders and growth in the economy, economy that provides prosperity and opportunity. Um, They probably know that President Trump in his first term strengthened America's royal economy by investing over about $1.3 billion through the um, Agriculture Department's Reconnect program into bringing broadband and infrastructure to rural America. Obviously, President Trump is overtly, visibly, and vocally a, quote, friend to farmers, believes that agriculture is a backbone of the United States economy, but the United States identity also. Just we are uh, built, we were built on being an agrarian society, and he very much respects that, invested a great deal along with Secretary Purdue at USDA into um, rural America. Trump has been calling repeatedly for an across the board tariff on imported goods, and his proposal is also in the new Republican platform. From your perspective, Kellyanne, do you think farmers and ranchers should expect another big government bailout if they lose export markets as a result? Well, what President Trump has said is that he wants to slap tariffs because it's just unfair. He looks at the trade practices unfair. He looks at we're, you know, we're um, importing, 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 and they're not taking our exports. And he always says it's non-reciprocal, it's imbalanced, it's unfair. Those are very important words to many in the agricultural community, particularly across rural America. So I don't know that it's a, quote, government bailout so much as in putting incentives in the system and rewarding those who are working hard um, to keep it an industry that is under constant assault by this administration and by the Democratic Party. I think part of that, frankly, is because the Democrats do very well in urban areas. They do very well in communities, densely populated um, communities and counties in around our major cities and then a little bit out into the suburbs. I think they've all but ignored rural America through their policies and through their um, political outreach. And it shows. So I, I know that... American farmers know they have a friend in President Trump, and he has consistently said privately and publicly, and to your very excellent point, Lydia, he even insisted it be in this new Republican platform. And like you mentioned, trade farmers can agree that a lot of those things are very unfair, but do you see the government providing any support if there is retaliation with with tariffs from other countries and it reduces the amount that, that American farmers can export? Do you see the government providing financial support to them? Could be. Uh, you'd have to ask Congress and certainly the next president that, but I, it, it could be. It certainly has happened in the past. Protecting farmers does sometimes mean making sure that they can share in the resource, the United States government resources, and that is a, a very worthwhile um, consideration. And I think it just depends on, instead of t- talking and projecting hypothetically, it really depends on the the circumstances. All the bullies, including those who would put tariffs on our farmers, perhaps in retaliation, Um, I think that in the case of President Trump, they see strength, not weakness. They see strength, not failure. They see somebody who's willing to stand up for America, American interests, American industry, American agriculture, and America herself. And they think thrice about how much to poke the bear. Uh, I think that's important. But sure, I think Congress would 
would take action and and the, would, would take action as they have in the past or strongly consider it. And I mean, we spend billions of dollars, trillions of dollars on of money we don't have on things we don't need. So protecting our farmers, I think, is always a worthwhile consideration. And Republican platforms have discussed reducing regulations. Uh, with the potential Trump administration, what can we expect for a regulatory rollback for farm country? It's a great question, Lydia, because if passed his prologue, you examine the first four years of President Trump's record and you compare that in a binary way to President Biden's record, it's very clear that President Trump early and often went out of his way to deregulate uh, across the board, across the agency and departments to give relief to those American businesses, the, the moms and pops, if you will, and the mothers and fathers, uh, to give relief and to, to put things more at parity, more fair. President Trump himself has said many times, Lydia, that he believes his deregulatory agenda, the accomplishments in his first four years, was even more important, I would say equally, but he says even more important to some Americans in American industry than was his Tax Cut and Jobs Act, because it gave immediate relief and it didn't always require action by Congress. It doesn't always want to act. So again, I talked earlier in our interview about WOTUS, the Waters of the United States rule, which had really um, suffocated many of our agricultural um, businesses and our farmers, certainly. But for rural America, I mean, that gave providing relief and certainty for farmers and other property owners to go from the from from the waters of the United States to the navigable waters protection rule, thereby giving you more control and autonomy and authority over your own property. It struck people as ridiculous that you can have a little pond of water on your property and couldn't use the property around it. Um, so that relief, of course, was there. And then a lot of the DREG agenda did come through the Department of Agriculture. It was one of the the, the most robust agencies and departments to produce DREG. And I think that's that, that's a that's a testament, honest, obviously, to President Trump and Secretary Purdue and his cabinet in, in so doing. But it also tells you an awful lot about the duplicative, onerous, odious, unnecessary, um, burdensome and costly regulations that had already existed. We'll be right back with more from Kelly and Conway right after this. Regenerative poultry production is a process by which nature can actually recapture and restore the energy that is being taken out of a space. Farm Credit helped Rehi build his dream of regenerative poultry farming and encouraging fellow immigrants to find community in agriculture. Nothing beats a farm. I'm just pursuing happiness. Learn more at farmcredit.com slash beginning. Spring floods, fall floods. There's extreme fires, extreme drought. Our farm is more resilient through the use of cover crops. We have better drought stress tolerance. When it all boils down to it, these USDA climate programs are good for Main Street America. All that increase, it's going back into the economy. If you're smart farming, you're, you're also climate smart farming. Welcome back. There are a lot of farm country districts that are considered toss-up races in the 2024 election. Former counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway, talks about some of the biggest issues to rural voters. Well, the left seems to want to talk about abortion, abortion, although I really haven't really heard the word abortion in the two weeks since the June 27th debate. I've just heard a lot about Joe Biden. Um, obviously, the re Republicans want to continue to talk about the broader economy, inflation growth, getting us back to wage growth, getting us back to lower prices, making sure that the supply chain shock that the Biden Buddha judge administration owned and should eat and own never happens again, never happens in quite that way. I fully encourage, particularly those who are pro farmer and rancher, pro agriculture, to finish their sentences, to complete the sale. If you just say inflation, dementia, Putin, Biden, border, farmers, ranchers, yay, you're not giving people what they want and need. The American farmer and rancher and rural voter is a very intelligent, wise person. They expect and accept a fuller conversation and specific solutions on these issues that are vexing and perplexing them, Lydia. And I think that they'll re they're willing to reward at the ballot box those candidates that that political party that stands in the breach and actually treats them like the intelligent people they are, and and hears them, listens to them, and then meets meets those needs where they are. 
So I think it'd be pretty fascinating and the conversation um, should continue. And I, I really do hope that whoever the president of the United States is at any time, that they don't turn their back on rural America because they're slicing and dicing the electorate according to race and age and gender and socioeconomic status and all of that. Uh, we have very specific concerns. And may I just say, Americans are choosing where to live now more than ever. And that means that those who are in rural America, it's not because they can't get to the big cities. It's because they love where they are. They want to stay where they are. They want to work and raise their families where they are. And they should be able to do that with without fear of a government coming and making it so onerous and burdensome to them that they're stripping them not just of their joy, but of their very freedom to do so. Uh, Kellyanne, just a final question for you. If Trump is elected, what do you expect that he will be looking for in appointees to the USDA and to the EPA? Yeah, it's a great question. I think he's made very clear he wants people who aren't drunk on power, who don't see America as a place where you can take your own personal peccadilloes or your political agenda and foist it on them. He wants a slimmer government that works for the people, doesn't take their money through regulation, legislation, tax receipts, and then spends it on things that people are saying that's not right. So look at the Inflation Reduction Act itself. We're almost at the two year anniversary, Liddy, of the Inflation Reduction Act package. It did no such thing. Everybody knows it didn't reduce inflation. We've been doing polling on this recently where Americans, senior citizens particularly, believe the Inflation Reduction Act um, did nothing to help the prices of gas, of groceries, of health insurance, of um, other energy costs, and certainly of prescription drugs. We've asked them about all of that. It certainly has not helped our agriculture, uh, agriculture in the United States of America. So through the EPA and through the USDA, President Trump is looking for leaders who don't think that their job in the federal government is to be expansive, intrusive, invasive, and expensive to we the people. Um, he wants to get in there pretty quickly with alacrity and focus and undo a lot of the onerous regulations, uh, the Keystone Pipeline jobs being killed, the war on fossil fuels, the, I think on the best day, ignoring rural America and the concerns of farmers and ranchers, and on the worst day, actually making it more difficult through the Biden-Harris administration, making it more difficult for them to do their job and to, and to, and to survive and to thrive. So he will be looking for folks, and I think President Trump should be looking for folks who, yes, they're aligned with the America First agenda. He's not looking for personal loyalty. He's looking for issue loyalty, somebody who is aligned with the America First agenda. As you say, the Republican platform is very clear on these issues and many others. Wonderful. Well, Kellyanne, thank you so much for your time and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Lydia. It was a real pleasure. We'll be back with a discussion featuring Congressman G.T. Thompson and Senator John Bozeman right after this. Farmers are always there for each other. We shed tears together, we celebrate together, but we also grow together. Farm Bureau is the largest general farm organization in the country. We have the farmers back. If you're a farmer and you're not a member, we would welcome you into our Farm Bureau family. And if you want to know more about agriculture, come be part of this great family. The Senate and House Ag Committees are busy working on the next Farm Bill, which will cover commodities, specialty crops, livestock, and more. This legislation will impact every farmer, rancher, and rural business for the next five years. Make sure you don't miss insights and analytics that only AgriPulse and its top-notch team of well-connected experts can provide. Register today for a free trial at agripulse.com and click the subscribe button or email us at pam at agri-pulse.com. You don't want to miss this Farm Bill coverage. Welcome back. There's been a lot of optimism throughout the convention about electing in a Republican administration in November. We sat down with House Ag Committee Chair G.T. Thompson and Senate Ag Committee Ranking Member John Bozeman to get their perspective on the Republican platform and issues facing agriculture. I'm still hopeful that we'll pass the farm bill so that we have the implementation that we give that to the Trump administration uh, whenever they come into office because I have confidence in you know the execution the administration uh, that the Trump administration will do um, and it will be important right uh, agriculture needs to be a priority it is the number one industry in the country and quite frankly what it contributes to the economy and jobs and, and everything else uh, and so that's that's my goal I'm, I'm still holding out hope that 
you know, we'll do the, we'll finish what they say can't be done. Uh, I'm going to get this thing passed, hopefully in September, out of the House, and then we'll work through uh, through the end of this uh, congressional cycle to, you know, to get something to the current president's desk, and we'll make that a gift for President Trump so he can execute what will be a great farm bill. I think that a Trump presidency and the House and the Senate in Republicans' hands would be really good for the farmers, really good for the farm community and rural America, very importantly. I think he showed in his, uh, in his when he was president at last that he has a great heart for the farm community. He understands the importance of rural America and we look forward to policies that strengthen rural America. 53% of our counties lost population last census, so they're moving in the wrong direction. And that's why the farm bill and good policy is so important. As GT said, though, we're continuing to work hard to actually get this farm bill done in this Congress. J.D. Vance has been a big proponent of using tariffs to protect U.S. industries, and ag groups have told us this week that they're concerned about a trade war. Are you concerned about that? J.D. Vance, I'm excited about him as vice president. He's very supportive of agriculture. He's been recognized by the Ohio Farm Bureau. That's usually a pretty good, uh, pretty good sign. And uh, and so I, you know, I think. One of the roles that I believe that we have is oversight in both the House and the Senate with the whoever's in the White House, and we'll do, I plan on doing this with the Trump 47, is to make sure that the Agriculture Committee is at the table, that we're representing the voices of the American farmer when it comes to trade. Um, you know, who are the bad actors who are not fulfilling their agreements they're supposed to do? And quite frankly, what are the new markets that, uh, for specific commodities we should be looking at? You know, I think we have an important role that we need to fulfill. And Senator Bozeman, if there are tariffs, can farmers be assured that the administration will provide a bailout? Well, I, I think the, the uh, administration is going to do a great job for farmers, a great job for rural America. Uh, the Biden administration has done a very, very poor job with trade. Uh, you look at the last two years, we've been running these huge trade imbalances in agriculture for the first time when, since anybody can remember. We always have a big ag surplus predicted to have an even bigger one in the future. So no. Uh, and then also, President Biden actually kept the tariffs in place. What I want from uh, President Trump, and I think he'll be very willing, is to make sure that whatever deals that we have or create are fair, that we don't have dumping, both sides play by the rules and tariffs are used as an as enforcement tool for that. But uh, I'm, I'm encouraged, I, I, and I think GT and I have both put our money where our mouth is. We've doubled, in my framework, in his bill, we actually doubled the tools that we give to farmers to, uh, to make trade agreements, which are so, so very important to agriculture. And trade is incredibly important. It is one of, one of many tools where, we're, where we make uh, agriculture great again. We'll be back with a discussion between the GOP Ag Committee leaders right after this. It's not as simple just to wake up one day and go, I want to be a conservation farmer. You're changing how your, your farming practice is done. You're changing your operation. Farm Credit supported John and Kelly Watley as they shifted to more sustainable farming, improving the environment where they farm and live. Learn more at farmcredit.com slash climate. Spring floods, fall floods, there's extreme fires, extreme drought. Our farm is more resilient through the use of cover crops. We have better drought stress tolerance. When it all boils down to it, these USDA climate programs are good for Main Street America. All that increase, it's going back into the economy. If you're smart farming, you're, you're also climate smart farming. Welcome back. Senator Bozeman and Representative Thompson say a Trump-Vance administration paired with the recent Chevron Doctrine overturn could change the agriculture regulatory environment. Well, I think, you know, a new EPA, uh, the Chevron case uh, is so important. And that was that was due to President Trump, you know, putting conservative members on the Supreme Court that instead of writing law, you know, or in interpret the law. So now uh, we have it such that this is going to put, a, a, I think, a real damper on the ability of the regulators just to come up with stuff 
that they arbitrarily want to do. So uh, there's lots of things that I think are important in that regard, but no. You know, the one thing that is such a problem is you can play with bad rules, you can play with good rules. If you know what the rules are, it freezes you. And right now we have an administration that is, is churning out rule after rule as fast as they can uh, with no, no uh, really investigation as far as the unintended consequences and things. So, you know, I think a, a Trump presidency will be very, very important with reducing rulemaking, which is so important. We know that we can do a better job and be more effective when we do it in a collaborative way versus a punitive way that this current EPA is doing. This current EPA, to me, is not the Environmental Protection Agency. It's the Excessive Punishment Agency. It's all been punitive. You know, we've seen that most recently, what, what they've done with some of the affluence off of, um, off of our farms, the new regulations they put in place. There's no collaboration. There's no understanding of the, of the unintended consequences that occur. Uh, we need to go back to an EPA that, you know, certainly is is provides the lead for protecting our environment but doing it in a way that is um, quite frankly is collaborative i would say that uh, do it in a way that's consistent with how we do our conservation programs voluntarily and locally led and incentive based the republican party this week has been especially vocal about immigration and border security and jd vance in particular has been especially vocal about that where do you think the trump vance administration would make the most difference in the area of immigration We've already had a great start on that in the House. I took the liberty of uh, using the, the rules of the 118th Congress, which allows me to have six subcommittees, but a task force additionally. And I formed that task force, um, now it's been a year, at least a year ago, um, and for nine months that task force, and we did it in a way that I really wanted results, not a press release. And so we've got a great start on uh, a list of bipartisan ideas. It's not about citizenship, you know, this is about, you know, legal foreign workers um, and it's been well embraced by the agriculture industry um, it'd be nice to get this farm bill out of the way because that's something I'd like to be able to move on we're not going to do that legislation through our committee that will be judiciary committee in the house um, but I'm looking forward to writing that legislation and, and getting advanced and I you know and I think um, the way we've done it um, we'll have tripartisan support Republicans Democrats and quite frankly the the American agriculture industry behind whatever initiative we put forward. How could a Republican administration and a Republican Congress change both the timeline of passage for the Farm Bill and what's included in it? I was recently in Baton Rouge uh, with uh, Senator Cassidy and I probably in our farm listening session probably half the time was spent talking about labor and the difficulties. Uh, the H2A program is a good program uh, but it doesn't work in the sense that it's, it's difficult to do. Without it, though, right now, farm labor would just collapse. It's difficult for any industry in America to get the labor needs that they, that they want. But when you're talking about, you know, work, picking crops, you know, working uh, in those areas, uh, construction, it's very, very difficult. So H-2A is a good program. The administration has made it very, very hard. They don't like the program because the unions don't like the programs. The unions want to organize all the farm labor. So I think there's a lot of things that we can do to reform some of these programs that will make them a lot more user-friendly, a lot more cost-effective so that our farmers can continue to be competitive. The labor is, is certainly something uh, that we've got to get figured out. If not, then we have a situation where if, if you listen to, to you know, farmers out in the field, it's the difference in being able to operate and not operate. We'll be back with more right after this. Looking closer, seeing further. That's how we do it. At Curious Plot, we're driven to find what's next for agriculture, animal care, and food. We stay curious because that's what it takes to grow understanding. That's how we plot strategies and tell stories that get results time after time. Marketing, communications, and consulting that look closer and see further. Curious Plot. We can't wait to help you tell your story. 
The Senate and House Ag Committees are busy working on the next Farm Bill, which will cover commodities, specialty crops, livestock, and more. This legislation will impact every farmer, rancher, and rural business for the next five years. Make sure you don't miss insights and analytics that only AgriPulse and its top-notch team of well-connected experts can provide. Register today for a free trial at agripulse.com and click the subscribe button or email us at pam at agri-pulse.com. You don't want to miss this Farm Bill coverage. Welcome back. Thanks for watching this special edition of AgriPulse Newsmakers from the RNC. We'll be back in August with another edition from the Democratic National Convention. For the latest on the elections and more, as always, visit agripulse.com. For AgriPulse, I'm Lydia Johnson. Newsmakers is a production of AgriPulse Communications. You can also find our new content on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to follow AgriPulse and our correspondents on social media to get breaking news and more. For agriculture, trade, food, environment, and regulatory news, your source is AgriPulse.com.